the early 1960s, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Ella Lemonser, concocted a plan for false flag operations as a pretext to invade Cuba and for war with the Soviet Union. In Operation Northwoods, they planned to hijack jets by remote control, crash them, and blame the attack on Cuba. There were many other terrorist attacks they planned to carry out that were contained within the document. One scenario mentioned was the destruction of a U.S. naval vessel that was to be blamed on a foreign power as a pretext for war with any enemy they picked. President Lyndon Baines Johnson went operational with Northwoods on June 8, 1967 during the Six-Day War. During the Six-Day War between Israel and the Arab nations, the USS Liberty was sent by Johnson to collect electronic intelligence in the eastern Mediterranean. The clearly marked U.S. intelligence ship was 14 miles off the coast of Israel in international waters. A short time after the air attack had been completed, the three torpedo boats approached us from our starboard quarter at high speed and in an apparent torpedo launch attitude. Israeli surveillance aircraft flew low over the ship and clearly identified it as an American vessel. At 2 p.m. that afternoon, the USS Liberty was attacked by three Mirage 3 fighter bombers. From the onset of the attack, the fighter bombers were jamming U.S. signals. Not only were they jamming U.S. signals specifically, they were also unmarked, the only unmarked aircraft in Israel's arsenal. The fighter bombers strafed the ships with their cannons, dropped conventional munitions and napalm on the ship repeatedly from stem to stern. After the Mirages had done their work, the ship was hit by medium bomber Dassault missiles carrying napalm and other munitions like white phosphorus. The USS Liberty was then attacked by three Israeli torpedo boats bearing Israeli flags. The torpedo gunboats opened fire with high caliber machine guns and launched torpedoes. A single torpedo struck the ship, blowing a hole in both sides, entering the ship and leaving a 30-foot exit hole when it exploded. Then the torpedo boats began strafing life rafts in the water, an international war crime. While all of this was happening, the oversized American flag flew clearly above the ship. The attack on the Liberty went on for hour after hour after hour. During the entire attack, the USS Liberty continually called the 6th Fleet that was nearby, begging for air support or rescue. Two aircraft carriers in the Med responded by launching fighter aircraft. Unbelievably, they were recalled by the White House. Rear Admiral Geis, then commanding the carriers in the 6th Fleet, called Washington personally to confirm the recall order. Secretary of Defense McNamara came on the line, and then President Johnson himself told Geis, I want that goddamn ship going to the bottom. No help. Recall the wings. Imagine being Admiral Geis begging the president to allow you to defend an American ship that's under attack and being told by him that he wants the ship going to the bottom. Despite the fact that the U.S. carriers withdrew their help, a Russian spy ship appeared and witnessed part of the attack. After three hours into the attack, the Israelis withdrew because there were witnesses, allowing the damaged USS Liberty to limp to safety. Forty years after the attack on the USS Liberty, we know exactly what happened. I've interviewed former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Thomas Moore. I've interviewed the admirals that were on the line who heard what President Johnson said. I've even talked to the head JAG officer of the Navy, who was ordered to falsify the reports and cover up what had really happened. One of the Israeli pilots has gone public as well, saying that three times he refused over his radio to headquarters to attack the ship, saying clearly that it was an American ship in international waters and an ally. He was ordered under threat of court-martial to engage the ship. In a nutshell, this is what happened. President Johnson had personal control over the ship, parked it in the Mediterranean, made a backroom deal with Israel to attack it with an order to kill all aboard. Then the attack on the ship was to be blamed on Egypt. The U.S. would enter the war and take over the entire Middle East. In the aftermath of the attack on the most highly decorated ship in U.S. history, the captain and his entire crew were told they would spend life in prison or be killed if they told anyone what happened. Captain William L. McGonagall was given the Congressional Medal of Honor in secret and told not to tell anyone that he had won the award. 